Our last case study today is Mrs. Sanchez. She's a 29-year-old Hispanic female who is overweight with a BMI of 25. She's a single mom with two children and therefore is busy. She just finished a physical and was very concerned when her doctor mentioned she had high body fat composition. While she's not significantly overweight, she is worried because of a family history of heart disease and early death. She exercises occasionally and tries to eat a healthy diet, but she needs feedback on her progress to stay motivated. What can I help you with today? I just got done with a physical. At the end of it, the doctor mentioned that my body fat was too high. That concerns me because I have a family history of heart disease and early death. I am a single mom and I want to make sure I stay healthy for my kids. I can understand why you would be concerned. What is your diet and exercise like? I try to cook healthy foods for my family. I would say in general our diet is good. I do exercise occasionally but my schedule is so busy that it is hard to fit it in. I know it's important, but I can usually find excuses not to go. It is tough to exercise on a regular basis, but exercise is really important, especially if you're interested in changing your body fat composition. When you're able to exercise, what types of exercise do you do? I have a gym membership, and so I use the treadmill to run or the elliptical machine. I probably go to the gym once a week or so. Is it hard to stay motivated? That's the reason I don't go as often as I should. Please discuss the following questions within your group. What changes in the patient's exercise regimen would you recommend? With Mrs. Sanchez's busy lifestyle, what tools could you recommend to keep her motivated to exercise? What is the target body fat percentage range for a woman in her late 20s? There are a couple of tools that I can recommend that may help keep you motivated. One is a fat loss monitor, which allows you to track changes in body composition. Using this on a regular basis would allow you to see how going to the gym consistently changes your percentage of body fat. You probably want your body fat percentage to be between 25 and 30, although your doctor can give you a specific goal. Another device that may be useful is a heart rate monitor. It helps you to exercise in your optimal target heart rate zone, which ensures that you're getting the best benefit out of your workout. Both of those sound like they may be able to keep me motivated. I need solid evidence to show that my workouts are making a difference to keep me from getting discouraged. You know, the other thing I would recommend is adding resistance training into your exercise regimen. Aerobic exercise is important, and I definitely don't want you to stop doing that. <laughs> But with the addition of this type of training, you should see changes in your body fat percentage over time. Just don't expect overnight results. The nice thing about resistance training is that it increases the resting metabolic rate so that you burn even more calories even when you're at rest. Aerobic exercise should be done every day if possible, and resistance training should focus on working all major muscle groups at least twice a week. You might want to check with your gym to see what they have available. I'll ask the fitness director at the gym what kind of programs they have. Sounds good. Please let me know if you have any questions. Let's have a look at the options we have for monitors. Our first case is Ms. Taylor, who is a 36-year-old female who's been categorized as obese. She has hypertension and hyperlipidemia. Ms. Taylor's been told that she needs to lose weight and start exercising. She's not been physically active over the last 10 years, and she also needs general recommendations for diet and behavior modification. She has a busy lifestyle and isn't sure how to fit exercise into her schedule. Hi, my name is Cindy Taylor. I have an appointment with a pharmacist to talk about weight loss. That's with me. Hi, Ms. Taylor. My name is Dr. Thomas. Before we start talking about weight loss, I'd like to get some basic information from you. What is your height and weight? I'm about 5'10", and I weigh 282 pounds. What medical conditions are you currently being treated for? High blood pressure and high cholesterol. That's part of the reason why the doctor says I need to lose weight. What medications are you currently taking? I take a diuretic for my blood pressure and I take Lipitor for my high cholesterol. What about vitamins, herbals, or other over-the-counter products? No, nothing. Nothing more than an occasional Tylenol for a headache. Okay, good. Well, let's talk about a weight loss plan. I know that your doctor referred you into our weight loss program here at the pharmacy. Have you tried to lose weight in the past? If so, what methods were successful? I have tried several diets over the years that I read about in magazines. 
They usually worked right away, but I always ended up gaining all the weight back and then some. I guess that means they weren't too successful. Fad diets always sound good. They'll promise you'll lose weight quickly and easily. But as you experienced, when you lose weight quickly, it tends to come back just as fast. The best solution is to make a long-term lifestyle change, changing the way that you eat and exercise. What is your current diet like? I eat out a lot. I don't mind cooking, but my job keeps me really busy. I'm usually too tired at the end of the day to cook. Have you been able to fit exercising into your schedule? I haven't exercised much for the last 10 years. It just hasn't been a high priority for me with my busy schedule. However, my high blood pressure and cholesterol make me nervous. I know I need to make some changes. What exercises do you enjoy or think that you would enjoy? I like to walk, but I'm not much for anything else. Please discuss the following questions within your group. The patient's height is 5'10 and weight is 282 pounds. What is this patient's BMI? What category does she fall into? Normal weight, overweight, or obese? What long-term complications do excess weight put Ms. Taylor at risk for? What problems can you identify with her current diet and exercise regimen? What calorie deficit should you recommend for her to lose a half a pound to one pound per week? What dietary changes should she make? What are some suggestions you can give her to help her decrease her calories when eating out? How often should Ms. Taylor be walking? What are ways to motivate her to walk more? I'm really glad that you're interested in making changes. Let's talk about your diet first. The best rate of weight loss is a slow one, one half to one pound per week. To do that, we'll need to decrease your daily calories by about 500. Don't worry, we won't do this all at once. We'll make gradual changes that work for you. So this can be a lifestyle change rather than just a quick fix. I'm glad, I would really like to lose weight faster though. I know it's frustrating to see it come off slowly. Just remember that it took a long time for the weight to come on, and so it can't be taken off overnight. The changes you make now will help keep you healthy for the rest of your life. Let's start with keeping a food diary for this week. Each day, record all the food you eat, and be honest, even when you don't want to be. This will help me give you suggestions on ways to decrease calories when we meet next week. I can give you a couple of suggestions right away, however, for eating out. One of the best things to do is to eat a smaller portion size. Restaurants nowadays give you way too much food. If you divide the portion in half and eat only that much, you'll be surprised at how many calories you eliminate. You may even ask them to pack up half the meal before they bring it out to you. Mm. Also try to choose foods that are baked or broiled rather than fried. Finally, avoid buffet lines. It's too tempting to overeat. I will definitely try to decrease my portions. I have a bad habit of cleaning my plate when, no matter how much food is on it. I understand. To help you motivate you to exercise, I'd recommend a pedometer step counter. We've got several models over here that you can look at. The pedometer clips on your belt and it tracks the number of steps you take in a day. For the next week, I'd like you to wear it and keep track of the number of steps you take per day. Your ultimate goal is to get to 10,000 steps per day. 10,000 steps? That's a huge number. Why that many? Well, 10,000 steps a day is equivalent to 30 to 60 minutes of physical activity. I know that you probably won't be walking that much this week, but we'll build you up to it. The nice thing about a step counter is that you don't have to find a block of time to exercise. The pedometer helps motivate you to increase your steps throughout the day. Hmm. Studies have been done that show if patients can consistently take 10,000 steps per day, improvements are seen both in cholesterol and blood pressure. I can certainly try it. Now you mentioned that you had high blood pressure. Has your doctor mentioned monitoring your blood pressure at home? He has, and I do actually have a blood pressure monitor at home, I just don't use it. It's really important to monitor your blood pressure regularly and keep a chart of your readings. The good news is that you should see your blood pressure decrease as your weight decreases. I'll try to be better about using it. Sounds good. Well, why don't you keep a food diary and step count diary over the next week? We can meet again in a week to go over them, and I can give you some more suggestions. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all your help. You're very welcome. I look forward to working with you. Let's begin with some examples of the body fat analyzers, or as they are also referred to, 
body fat monitors, or fat loss monitors. We're going to address both the handheld as well as the scale versions of these devices. A few cautions prior to recommending this type of device to a patient. To begin, let's look at the scales. Prior to using the scales, many of these devices will require that you program the device by inputting some basic information. Many of these scales can be preset and store in memory the information from one to nine individuals. In addition, they will also provide a guess feature for other individuals who choose to use the device without needing to reprogram one of the personal preset keys. Setting up the scale, the patient will be asked to enter information such as age, gender, and height, as shown in this demonstration. Once this is done, the patient is ready to use the scale. While the scales vary in their features, they all basically require the patient to stand on the scale in bare feet, with their heels centered on the electrodes located toward the rear portion of the scale. If the person has longer feet, the toes may overhang the measuring platform. Please note, some of these devices will require that the patient have damp feet when they stand on the scale, while others will require the feet to be clean and dry. Please refer to each device's manual for specifics. It's important to remind patients not to move until the measurement is complete. Let's review some of the specific features of a few of these scales. First, we will review the Tanita BF680W Duo Scale Plus Body. The other type of body fat monitor that we mentioned is a handheld device. These devices are also simple to use and require the same precautions as those mentioned for the scales. Also, similar to the scales, the device will require the patient to input certain information prior to use, including height, weight, age, and gender. To use this type of handheld device, the patient stands with both feet slightly apart and places both hands on the monitor by holding the grip electrodes. The middle finger should be wrapped around the groove in the middle of the handle and the thumb should rest on top of the monitor as shown in the demonstration. The patient needs to hold their arm straight out at a 90 degree angle from the body. To initiate a reading, press the start button and hold the electrodes until the reading is displayed. We've now seen the evidence, such as the 10,000 step study, that just simply walking every day can help our patients achieve significant health benefits and reduce the risk of cardiovascular complications. As a health professional, our goal is to get our patients walking and counting the steps that they take each day. As mentioned previously, it is we will review several pedometers and step counters. For purposes of today's demonstration, we will focus on one of the many commercially available pedometers and highlight some of the appropriate techniques for use. Before using a pedometer or step counter, it is important to know certain information that the device will require that the patient input in order to achieve accurate results. Typically, all devices will require the following, time, weight, and stride length. Simple instructions on how to do this are included in the product manuals. However, stride length is really meant for the user who wishes to know the distance traveled. Our goal, as mentioned previously, is to have patients count the number of steps taken per day. If the patient wishes to be more progressive and keep track of distance traveled as a measure of positive reinforcement and to see the improvement in their exercise routine, then you may suggest that they enter their stride length. Calculating stride length is a very simple procedure 
and all devices will feature concise instructions in their manual. Placement of the pedometer on the body is a critical step for the proper use and effectiveness of the device. All pedometers can be placed on a belt or waistband and must be positioned completely horizontal with the ground for the unit to function correctly. Some devices, through advanced technology, will offer the flexibility of alternative placement, such as a shirt pocket or in a handbag, or using the attached lanyard clipped onto a bag or any part of the body as seen here. For those devices that come in a case, the case must be closed during use. Let's now take a look at the features of the various pedometers and step counters that we will be discussing here today. The first device is a step counter, the New Lifestyles DigiWalker SW200. This device offers... Finally, we will discuss the heart rate monitors. As we heard previously, to achieve an effective workout, the heart rate must be maintained at a proper level for at least 20 minutes. As such, a heart rate monitor will allow a patient to exercise within their target zone for optimum fat burn as well as weight loss or maintenance. This will also help to avoid overexertion or muscle strain during exercise by limiting the intensity of the exercise to the proper level for achieving maximum gain. These devices are fairly easy to use and basically consist of a transmitter and a strap that is placed around the patient's chest, as well as a receiver that is worn on the wrist like a watch. To begin, a patient should attach one end of the transmitter to the elastic strap and adjust the tension of the strap to fit comfortably around their chest. The patient should wrap and center the belt just below their muscles or breasts. For most models, the patient should then moisten the transmitter electrodes on the back and check to see that the electrode areas are pressed firmly against the skin. The receiver or wrist unit should then be worn as a watch. Press the appropriate start or OK button to begin recording your exercise data. Please note, each heart rate monitor will vary with regard to the range of length of the chest strap and with regard to optimal chest sizes to ensure an accurate reading. On some models, a mounting bracket is provided so that the receiver can be placed on the exercise equipment, such as most treadmills or stationary bicycles and as such be in clear view during exercise. Now let's take a look at some of the specific features of three heart rate monitors. The first heart rate monitor that we will discuss is the Polar F4 Fitness Heart Rate Monitor. The reason that we have selected this monitor is because